Hi, in today's video we're going to look at an IM3303. This is a biscuit master station it's instead of being white. And this particular one was sent in by Ed from Indiana. This unit was manufactured around 2000 or so. Ed reports that a few weeks ago they had a storm in the part of Indiana where he lives and there was lightning and he thinks that this unit either has lightning damage or possibly damage from a utility line power surge perhaps lightning hit a power pole transformer or something like that during the storm the set shut off along with some other things in his house and he was smart enough to open it up and realize that the transformers that power the 3303 which are in the wall housing down below it the are behind it were getting very hot and he decided to disconnect it from them so whatever damage it had wouldn't get worse that's good on you ed you did a good thing by doing that you probably salvaged your unit from having really really serious damage instead of just kind of ordinary serious damage right now it's powered off and I'm not going to power it up yet because I have a pretty good idea what's wrong with it because I already have had a quick look at it this morning before I decide to make a video about it what I have right now is it's sitting on the workbench I have it hooked up to my bench power supplies which I use in place of transformers because it's more efficient when you're working on sets over and over and over again and I'm going to show you what happens when I power it up and what I think is wrong with it let's see what we find so what you're looking at here are my two BK Precision bench power supplies these are used in place of normal new tone low voltage transformers because they have variable output they also have a volt and amp meter built into each one, which is a simple but useful diagnostic tool. And so these are what I use to power intercoms when I'm repairing them. And these are what are powering Ed's IM3303 master station. So I'm going to turn these on in a second to show you what happens. You should know that in a properly working 3303 master station that's in good condition, they will draw somewhere between a quarter of an amp and a half an amp depending one transformer always draws a little more than the other one because it's the for the primary power supply in the master station but let's say on an average they're drawing 0.3 amps per transformer so we'll, we have Ed's set hooked up and you can see the needle so watch the needles that's the important part so let's go ahead and flip these on this is only going to be for a couple of seconds and I have to shut them right off so let's go ahead and turn them on in fact we'll do them one at a time we'll do this one first and you can see the needle pegs over it's well past two amps and then we'll do this one and this one's right about an amp and a half right here these are both set to 16.8 volts which is similar to what you get out of a 301T transformer however I'm pretty sure that when we measure the voltage you'll see it's much less than that at the moment the 16.8 volts was set with no load connected to the power supply so I know it's accurate so we'll flip them on just for a second together and you can see the needles and then we'll shut them off so see with this one on it's pegged at 2 amp this one is now almost 2 amps that's because there are feedback circuits in the power supply and when you power them up individually it's not really exactly the same as powering them both up together let's go ahead and take a look at what our voltage is in this condition and then I'm going to explain what's probably wrong with Ed 3303 so now we're looking at my Keysight bench multimeter and I've got it set on it's an auto range meter it's set on the AC voltage scale and I'm going to try to do this quickly because we don't want to leave it turned on any longer than we really have to so I'm going to turn on the bench power supplies I'm going to measure the voltage on each one and I'm going to shut them off quickly and you'll be able to see what it is here remember these were set at 16.8 volts with no load before I hooked them up to Ed's 3303 so let's go ahead and we'll flip them on and the first one I'm only getting 4.7 volts and the second one the wire came off hold on let's go ahead and try that again we'll start them from the beginning I'm going to turn on the power supplies and then measure each one so now they're on the first one we're only getting 2.36 volts or 3.4 volts and the second one we're only getting 2.9 volts 
they're both pegged out at almost two amps. So you can see that the load is so great from the 3303 that's dragging down the power supplies. These are not constant voltage or constant current power supplies. They're simple AC bench power supplies, so they don't have the ability to adjust for the load to keep the voltage regulated at what it was set for with no load. It's, an, it's a, a proper type of bench power supply to use in replacement of transformers. So let's go ahead and take a look at Ed's 3303 and I'll tell you what's wrong with it. Okay, so we're looking at the back of Ed's IM3303 master station and what we're looking at here is this area is primarily amplifier. Not entirely, but primarily. So here we have the big aluminum heat sink. Mounted on the heat sink are the output transistors. There's a voltage regulator, and most of this area down in here have to do with the amplifier circuit. These devices here, here, and here are resistors. And you can tell they're resistors because if you do this all the time, you know what a resistor looks like. And you can also tell because they have the color bands on them. And the color bands are a coating that tells you what the rating of the resistor is. These are large two watt ceramic wire wound resistors. They're heavy duty. By comparison, these are rated for two watts. This little pink one right here is probably a half a watt and this little tiny sort of yellow colored one right down here, this is probably an eighth watt. So these are big, massive two watt resistors and the larger the wattage, the more current you can pass through it without it overheating and burning itself up. And I'm gonna show you what happens when you pass too much current through a trans uh, resistor that's not designed to handle that amount of current. Here's what we're gonna do. I know what's wrong with Ed Set. Ed Set has a shorted amplifier. One of the ways I know that is when I looked at the, this set this morning before I brought it to the shop to repair it, one of the things I noticed right off the bat was these two resistors look somewhat different than this one. These three are exactly the same type with exactly the same rating. And although it may be difficult to see in the video, and it may be something that would be overlooked by an inexperienced eye, this one is red, red, gold, gold. And this one is supposed to also be red, 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 gold, or red, red, gold, gold. But it looks more like brown, brown, silver, brown or black perhaps. And when I saw this initially, I knew right off the bat that these had begun to overheat and the overheating of them changes the color of the banding on it because they get so hot. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna measure these first. And this is my little inexpensive Radio Shack infrared temperature probe. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna point that to one of the resistors and hopefully you can kind of see it. And I've got it about a half an inch away and that one reads 22 degrees Celsius and then we'll go and we'll do the second one should be the same and that one's 21.8, 22, it depends on how close you get to it, but we're not doing critical temperature measurements here. We're just getting a ballpark idea of what it is. So let's say on an average, they're 22 degrees Celsius. They're turned off. They're at ambient room temperature and all of that. Now I'm gonna power the set up and we're gonna measure the temperature while it's on and we're gonna see how rapidly they increase. And we have to keep this short because we don't wanna burn anything up. Okay, ready, set, go. Set's turned on. Reading the temperature, 23, it's going up, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. It's going up about 0.2 degrees Celsius every second, maybe more. We're up to 32, 34, 35. And the volt, the amp meters on the power supplies are both pegged at two amps right now. We're up to 36. When we reach 50, and I hope you can see this, we're going to shut it off because I don't want to burn anything up. 
So we're at 41. It depends on how close you get to it, but this is mostly just to prove a point. We're at 45. 46. I think that's enough. I think we're going to turn it off. All right. So that was on for, I'm guessing, maybe like 10 or 12 seconds. And these are so hot that you can't touch them. And I know that because earlier today, before I brought it here, I powered it up at the office just to have a look at it. And I'll see if I can show you this or not. So here we have, see this right here? This mark. This is some, but this is the mark that you get on your thumb when you absentmindedly think, oh, maybe the resistors are getting hot. I think I'll put my finger on it and check and see, and you get a burn. And although you probably can't see it, you can actually, there are actually indentions. It's indented where it burned my thumb, and you can actually see where the stripes were because they're kind of bumps on the surface of the resistor. That was really stupid. One of the things you have to think about is why did the amplifier fail? Well, it probably failed failed because Ed had lightning that probably hit a power pole or something to do with his utility line power and he got a power surge through the transformers into the set killed different components in the amplifier and now there's a dead short in the amplifier and it's drawing too much current which is why the transformers get hot and nothing works we get a lot of 3303s in with failed amplifiers and you can see in this picture uh, it's from our website where I wrote about failed amplifiers. The red arrows point to different components that typically fail. And if you look down in the center of the picture, you can see the two resistors with the red arrows pointing to them and the outside covers are all burnt off. And that's what happens when you have a shorted amplifier and you don't open it up and pull and disconnect it from the power right away and it sits there and it cooks itself to death eventually it actually starts to burn things up until you get real failures and that can be really really bad when you're trying to diagnose a problem like this one of the things you have to consider is the this 3303 right now is pulling two amps on two, on both power rails and you have to think about what kind of components are there in here that can handle two amps of current without having already smoked themselves. So we know that these resistors are getting really, really, really hot, too hot to touch. The resistors are not the problem. The resistors are a casualty of another problem further down this downstream from them one of the things you have to consider is what kind of components are there in the amplifier circuit that can draw two amps or more and not immediately smoke themselves and generally speaking it will it would be the output transistors because they're higher powered devices and that would be the likely cause so these are probably bad but along with that there's lots of other components that would be considered downstream of them and those should be replaced also because they may not have gotten that hot yet but it, heat does affect how components work and the value of the component. You don't want to leave stressed components in an amplifier. Sure, you might get a buy with just whacking in a couple parts and, oh, it's okay now, but when you send it back to the customer, what happens two months from now when another small resistor that was stressed fails and then it stops working and then he has to send it back to you again to get it fixed a second time. It's much better to do it all right the first time. So I'm gonna show you really quick about what happens when you put too much power through a resistor and how they burn up. So what we're looking at here is a variety of resistors in different sizes. This is a 5 watt resistor. This is a 2 watt. This is also a 2 watt. And even though they are different physical sizes, they both have the same rating. This is a 1 watt and this is a quarter watt, the little blue one right here. The higher the rating, the more current you can have flow through the resistor and have it operate at normal temperatures. If you try to pass 
too much current or too much power through the resistor than it's designed to handle, it will get hot. If it gets too hot, it'll start to break down. It, the resistance of the resistor will change and eventually the body of the resistor will fall apart or crack and then it will fail. So again, the larger the resistor, the more power that can flow through it. A lot of amplifiers use fairly large resistors for some of the circuit, but they also use small resistors for different parts of the circuit that don't have as much current demand. And when you have a failed amplifier, the output transistors are drawing huge amounts of power through the circuit, and that's why we saw the 2 watt resistors in EDS 3303 get hot. But let me show you what happens as things continue to fail, what happens downstream, especially when we get into the smaller resistors. So here we're looking at the little quarter watt resistor, and this is actually one of the resistors that's in the amplification circuit of a 3303. This is one of the ones that's gonna get replaced in Ed's master station. And all I've done is I've hooked it up to the bench power supply just to show you as an example what happens when you overload a resistor. Ah, see? That's referred to as letting the magic smoke out. That's how fast it fails. This resistor is now probably dead. I'll go ahead and turn it on again, and there's no current, there's no current flowing through it, so it's burnt itself out, and that's what happens. Uh, you can see in some of the pictures on our website that this happened almost instantly. It happened within less than a second of powering it up. Uh, but when you have a master station with a failed amplifier and it's on continuously for a long period of time, the components gradually heat up more and more over time as things fail and as more things fail, more things get hot. And it's kind of one of those chicken and egg things where one problem causes another that causes another that causes another, or as it said, sometimes it's turtles all the way down, get hot. And I've actually show pictures on our website where little resistors like this, they actually get hot for such a long period of time that they begin to burn craters into the surface of the circuit board. And on the back side of the board, board where the copper traces are that make the circuits, it eats, it burns them away and they're totally gone. And people that have those kind of problems, they're really, really difficult repairs sometimes. So if you have a failed set, it's always better to disconnect it before it gets really, really. So that's all for today. Ed's 3303 is going to get repaired today. His amplifier, along with some other things in it, are going to get completely rebuilt. I won't really show that because it's just an ordinary rebuild, and we have sort of a complete article with pictures on our website that you can look at. So there'll be a, a link to our website down below in the vi this video's description. Uh, I hope you found this interesting and helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube. Uh, if you would subscribe to our YouTube channel, we would appreciate it. Our channel and our videos are ad-free. We don't have any advertising. We do this just to help people. And if you subscribe to our channel, it raises our search rankings on YouTube, which means more people find our videos and we'll be able to help them also. So that's all for today. See you on the next video.